Hi guys, I am Mrs. Gellum and I am going to talk to you today about close reading. Many of you are sitting at home and you are looking at your summer assignments that have been assigned to you by your future teachers at Bishop Dunn. And today, um, although I am an English teacher, today I do want to talk to you about just close reading. And this is a transferable skill. So anything I'm talking about today, you can transfer to your history class, your science classes, and even maybe a math class. So again, we're going to talk about close reading. I'm going to give you five easy steps on how to read and interact with a text. So step one, I suggest that you read the text slowly. Now I understand you're looking at a book for your summer reading and you're thinking, no, I just want to plow through this book. I just want to get, get it over with. But what I suggest you do is take your time with the book, interact with the book, and I'm going to give you some hints on how to interact with what you're reading. But slow yourself down so that you understand what you are reading. Now, step two, I'm going to encourage you to summarize what you have read. Now, you could do this by stopping at every other paragraph, stopping at every paragraph, or if it is your summer reading, you might want to stop at the end of each chapter. And then I want you to ask yourself the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. However, um, if you'll notice my screen here, I have the order mixed up. And I just did this on purpose just so it, it fit what I was reading. So if I look at the very first page, the introductory page of Just Mercy, um, the book that one of the books that I'm reading this summer, um, I know who is speaking to me immediately. The story begins with the word or the pronoun I. So I wrote Brian. Now, um, the next sentence tells me the setting of the story. He, it takes place in Georgia in 1983, and um, Brian here is driving. So I wrote down what he's doing. He is driving. And why is he driving? I know just by reading the very first few paragraphs of the introduction that he is driving to go speak to a prisoner. So right now, I have some idea of what this story is going to be about. Something more than likely happened to somebody and he is now in prison. So steps three and four, I'm going to lump together. Now step um, three, I want you to mark any unfamiliar word. Like I said, this is a transferable skill, this close reading. So um, when you are sitting in a history class or sitting in a science class and you're reading something, look up the word if you don't understand it. Um, so mark it and then immediately define it. Now this is going to slow you down, yes. However, this is going to build your vocabulary and it might give you a hint as to what is going to happen later on in a text. So I want you to mark any unfamiliar word and immediately define it. So um, as I'm reading the introductory paragraph, um, I came across the word litigation. I marked it in my book. Now, of course, I know what the word litigation means. I've been a lifelong reader. However, I'm trying to put myself in a sixth, seventh, or eighth grader's shoes, and maybe you don't know what it means. So look it up. And when I looked it up, and I just Googled it, guys, um, I came up across this very simple definition. It's legal action. So now I know, if I go back to my previous screen, um, I know that Brian, in 1983, is driving to speak to a prisoner about a legal matter. So I know a little bit more of what is going to happen in this memoir. And step five, this is my favorite step, I encourage you to underline, circle, mark, highlight any word, phrase, image, or idea that stands out to you, that says something to you, that resonates with you. And that way, when you are sitting in class come August 10th and that first and second week of school, when we sit around and discuss our summer reading, you have something to say. So mark it. Now, um, again, I will show you a better copy in just a moment, but if you look at mine, you will see I've made notes to myself. So I didn't only just underline an image, I made a short note, and it may be one or two word note, but just make a little note as to why that word, idea, phrase stands out to you. And finally, um, what I want you to remember is that you're not going to be wrong. You are interacting with the text, 
and you're not going to be wrong. And in fact, hopefully this will give you more confidence when you do sit around in your classrooms and you're discussing with your classmates the story and you will be able to participate in that discussion because you already have your notes inside of your book. Now, before um, I end, I just wanna show you an example. Now, like I said, you're not going to be wrong. This kind of looks um, sloppy, but this is how I um, read a text closely. Um, I circle things, I highlight things, I underline things, I might even throw in a different color, but it helps me process what I am reading. So just a quick review, um, maybe, a quick review for you. Um, I want you to read slowly. Um, remember to stop and pause and summarize the text. You can do that after every chapter. You can do it after each paragraph, but stop and summarize what you read. Then you're going to mark and define any unfamiliar words. And then you're gonna mark any image, phrase, or idea that stands out to you. And then make a short, quick note out to the side why you picked that, um, that word, that phrase, or that image. And finally, I just wanna say happy image, and happy reading, and welcome to Bishop Dunn.